good evening, Agape. It's so good to see you on this Revival Fire night. Listen, I'm going to ask you a question, and I hope you be honest with yourself. Listen, if you come to give God the glory, I need you to put it there in the chat section. Come on, we're going to do it here. Like our pastor says, you do it there. Come on, we're going to lift his name. If you know there's no one like him in all the earth, I need you to give him glory today. Come on, everybody, clap your hands. Yeah, gather your family around. Come on, turn that volume up. Let's praise him together. Oh. Yes, Lord. I said no one else can receive the glory. Said, no one else can receive the glory. No one else can receive the praise. Come on. No one else can receive the praise. No one else can receive the glory. Said, no one else can receive the glory. No one else can receive the praise. No one else can receive the praise. No receive the praise. Why? Because he's holy, holy and righteous. And
let's lift this to the Lord. Listen. You, Lord, you are worthy. Thank you, Lord. And no one can worship you for me. For all the things you've done for me. This is our declaration this night. Here's my worship. Yeah. All of my worship. Receive my worship. All of my worship. You, Lord. We lift this to the Lord. Come on, and no one can worship you. Lift this chorus. Here's my worship set. Here's my worship. All of my, all of my worship. Father, receive my, receive my worship. All of my, all of my worship. Oh, here's my worship. Here's my worship. All of my worship. All of my worship. Father, receive our worship tonight. We're here, that's why we stay in your presence. Yeah, here's my worship. Say, all of my worship, Father. We present our bodies to you, and we lift our hands and we open up. our prayer this evening as long as I Sing it with us tonight. Yeah. As long as I am breathing, come on, say it. As long as I am breathing. Yeah. Lift it from your heart. It's all about him. You got it. Come on. Oh, and I will not be silent. Come on. Anybody like us today? Come on. 
Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Worthy, worthy, worthy are you, Lord. Worthy, worthy, worthy in all of your ways. And we worship you today with all that we have, acknowledging you as our, our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer, our Father. In fact, Daddy, we honor you. We worship you in the beauty of your holiness today, our Father. May your name be magnified. May your glory be revealed. May your kingdom be manifest in the life of each one who's joining with us today. We thank you, Father, for yet another time to gather in your name to encounter you. Throw your weight around. Showcase your glory. And all the praise belongs to you, not unto us, but to the name of the Lord be all praise, glory, and honor. Well, welcome on this Wednesday evening. The presence of the Lord is here. I can tell when he's here. I can tell when that presence is here, and I can tell when, mm, but the presence of the Lord is here, and his glory is being revealed. Do you have expectancy tonight? I do. I have great expectancy that God is up to something. God wants to do something for you. Don't watch us. Here's a key. Participate with us in the praise and in the worship. And in just a little bit, I'm going to share something with you that's going to encourage your heart. It's going to lift you up. And it's going to help us all as we cry out to God for revival fire. If this is your first time with us tonight, well, thank you for joining us. We're glad to have you on our online virtual uh, platform. And if this, in fact, is your first time, I'd like you to take a moment just as soon as you can. Now, if so, uh, but please get, get, get your mobile device in hand and text first time to 79, 79, 79. As soon as you do that, we will immediately respond something from our heart to yours. Thank you for joining with us tonight. Don't let this be your last time. We're on every Wednesday evening at this very exact time and Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. I got some good news. You can join us in person on Sundays at 9 a.m. Come, we'd love to have you. It's great being online. You're going to be blessed by being online this evening. But I promise you, there is nothing quite like an in-person live agape experience. So I encourage you to come and be a part of what's happening here in person in the city of Rawway, New Jersey. Listen, if you haven't done so already, please share the link. Let somebody know that we're on. And listen, if you haven't already liked our page, subscribe to YouTube, our YouTube page, please go ahead and do that. We need your support. This is worship. This is our time together. If we were in person, we would have what we call our agape hug time. Uh, not really hugging like we were doing pre-COVID, but we're greeting one another. So let's be very generous. Greet one another. Come on, don't watch everybody else greet. You be a part of it and welcome one another. Let's be engaged today. I'm going to step out the way and the worship team's going to lead us further. I'll be right back. And the song says, I will call upon the Lord for he is worthy.
come on. I got to thinking about it as they were, as the worship team was leading us. Um, this, not this version, but the song, Oh Magnify the Lord, was the one of the first, in fact, I think it was the first song Agape sang together 32 years ago in my parents' garage. It was a more simple version of the song, but the message remains the same. And after all of these years, we still declare there's only one. There's none like him. He deserves all the glory. He deserves all the praise. And listen, I don't know what you came to do. I don't know why you're on right now, but I came to praise the Lord. Can we just lift up another 30 seconds of great praise to him? We'll do it here, you do it there, but come on, everybody. Come on, glorify his name. Wonderful, wonderful. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I tell you, get in the presence of the Lord and that sour face will flee because something happens when you go to thinking about the goodness of the Lord and, and you just don't watch other people praise him, but you get into the praise. Some say, I don't feel like praising him. Come on, grow up. You don't need to feel like praising him. All you need to do is be thinkful. And when you become, become thankful or thoughtful, then you, my God, you just begin to thank him. Thoughtfulness leads to thankfulness. And God would have us to give him thanks at all times. See, you can praise your way out of current positions if you just humble yourself and do what God gives you to do. And when you glorify God and stop complaining to God about your issues, your problems, your troubles. Listen, troubles come and go, and this too will pass, but he remains faithful in all of his ways. Get your attention on him and watch God move on your behalf. Wow, thank God for the joy of the Lord in this house today, and I believe not just in this place, but wherever you are. I want to just, uh, I want to inform you of some things, remind uh, of you, those of you who've heard our upcoming announcements, just briefly, please go to our website to find out more as to what's going on here around Agape. Um, but uh, um, I want you to please, be here on Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Be here on Sunday. Uh, this is the weekend before going back to school. And I've got a very, very special presentation for you on Sunday. I've asked a dear friend and brother. He's no stranger to Agape. Uh, his name is Dr. Alex Ellis. And Dr. Alex Ellis, is. I've asked him to come. I just believe he's the man for the job, that God has a particular word for him that I know is going to encourage all of you who are students in the educational system, and not just students, don't say, I'm gonna stay home because I'm not going back to school. No, he's gonna speak to the general demographic as well. You are going to dine well here on Sunday morning. You're going to be enriched in the word of God. You're gonna be motivated. You're gonna be in, in equipped. You're gonna be empowered. It's going to be great. So I want you to be here Sunday at 9 a.m. If you just can't get here, uh, then please, join us at 9 a.m. online. And then please uh, save the date, the weekend of September 18th. September 17th, we've got a, a very uh, special presentation for our women. This is Women's Weekend. We have it every year. And we've got a, a wonderful event planned, table talk, which will happen on Saturday is for women only. Of course, on Sunday is for all, all people, men, women, boys, and girls. And our very special guest on that Sunday morning is uh, Pastor Fondrea uh, Lewis, and she's going to be with us, and I'm just looking forward to her ministry uh, here. And it's just going to be an explosive weekend, so please note it and plan to be here. Well, it's at this time of our service we continue our worship and this time in giving. I want to call your attention to a familiar passage of Scripture found in Colossians chapter 3. We're going to look at Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, 23, and verse 24. 
And you'll find these words. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord Christ. I encourage you today as you're preparing your heart to give with this thought. Give with your heart. Um, put your heart in it. Do what you do in the name of the Lord for the cause of Christ and for the advancement of his kingdom. Your giving is partnering with him and particularly as it relates to your being a member of the body of Christ and for those of you who are members of, of Agape uh, and, and whatever church that you call home, you're connected there by being a member not only of the universal church but of a local assembly. The local assembly needs the support that you give. It needs your support in time, talent, and treasure. And it's here where we step up and worship the Lord with our treasure, that which we have received from him. God loves a cheerful giver. So put your heart in it. It is not time to, to frown. You've been smiling thus far. Make the smile even big, bigger because God has blessed you. He's put you in position so that you have something to sow. If you'll say, well, I'm without work. I don't have a job. Find something. The quantity of what we give may not be the same, but the quality of what we give should be equal among us. Give your absolute best. And when you do so, God sees your heart. God sees what you do. God sees what you put your heart in. Be willing to do it. Do it in the name of the Lord, and you will be blessed for doing it. For your giving is not to a man. Your giving is not to a church organization. Your giving is, in fact, given to the Lord, and that's the one you serve. And God, who sees what you do in secret, will reward you openly. Worship team's going to lead us further because this is worship. So as an act of worship and one of genuine faith, let's bless the Lord today in our giving, the giving of our tithe and offering. Instructions for giving electronically are on the screen. And for those of you who are giving uh, via support of ministry um, um, through uh, sending a check uh, in the mail, thank you. And for those of you who perhaps will hold on to it until you get here on Sunday, we thank you for however way, whatever means, rather, you uh, decide to support the work of the ministry here financially, we say thank you so very, very much. Again, you empower us to do great things for the Lord, and what we do together is credited to our account. That's yours, and that's mine. God bless you. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. It's going to be really special. You're going to enjoy tonight. I'll be back. Amen. Hallelujah. We continue to call on the name of the Lord. Why? Because there's no defeat in him. If you know that to be so, I need you to put there in the chat section, no defeat in Christ Jesus. Come on. Come on, move with us, everybody. Come on. Lift this with us tonight. No more losing. No more losing. In Jesus. In Jesus, I found a place. I've got a new life. Everybody, no more losing, no more losing. 
Christ Jesus, our Lord. Don't let the enemy, don't let him overwhelm you with what's going on. You got victory on the inside of you. Remember, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Thank God for Jesus. I want you to take that seed and just lift it up before the Lord. My God, my, my, the winners out there, even winners financially, winners as far as peace and prosperity goes, wealth and riches be in your house in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the seed that you've given to us. you placed it in our hands. you blessed us that we might be a blessing. Today we do it with all of our heart. We give heartily to the Lord, and we give willingly, and we give generously. Take pleasure in what we bring to you today, and I thank you that you watch over your word to perform it for each and every one of us. I thank you that you will cause the sower to have seed again to sow because of the bountiful harvest that you will cause to come into our lives. It's in Jesus' name we give. Thank you, Father. Amen and amen. Yeah, if you haven't put it there in the chat area, come on, encourage somebody. Tell them you shall not be defeated. Come on, encourage one another. Be an encouragement. Be an encouragement. You shall not be defeated. There is no defeat in Christ, only victory, only triumph. Listen, uh, amazing team today, show them some appreciation. Come on, some hand claps, some thank you, uh, whatever, uh, however you choose. Come on, smiles, hearts, let them know that you appreciate their service and ministering to you today. I know they have blessed me immensely. I'm encouraged. I'm strengthened. I, I'm energized, in fact. Sometimes at the end of the day, when you get to this point in, in place in time in life, uh, you know, you, you get a little tired. But I thank God every time I come into uh, an environment like this, my spirit is lifted. I'm energized. To God be the glory. Listen, I told you I had a special presentation, so I need a minute. Just to, Actually, not even a minute. I'm just going to rush and um, change into my scrubs. Oh, I'm sorry. That was, that was Sunday. It ain't even going to take that long. Just hold it. Just 
wait right there. I want to thank you, praise the Lord. How he healed me of a cancer when I had five years. When the doctor said there wasn't no cure for it, how I went back to the same doctor to run tests and x-rays on me. They couldn't find no stuff of the cancer. That's been over five years ago, and I'm still here. You know what I'm Thank God for my healing. I thank and praise God for healing me of a heart condition. After suffering with an enlarged heart for more than 10 years, in uh, 1955, the 25th of September, I was brought down with a chronic heart condition. I was in the hospital three times. After all, they gave me up to die, sent me home, so there was nothing else to be dead for me. I was brought to the Bethlehem Healing Temple, and just as Sister prayed the Mass prayer, I stood. God miraculously healed my body. That's been, this year will be 10 years ago, and I'm still healed and still saved. You might be wondering, well, what is that of? What? What am I watching? What am I listening to? Those are actual testimonies that were recorded uh, during a radio broadcast at the Bethlehem Healing Temple in Chicago, Illinois, in the year of uh, 1950s, 1960s, thereabout. Um, I wanted to share on this evening something to encourage your hearts. And I want to give us a text for tonight, and that is Hebrews 13 and 8. And the word of God reads this way, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I want you to just say that or put Hebrews 13 and 8 there in the comment section. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's good news, believer. That says to me, that says to you, that says to us, that says to the world that God does not change. There's no need for him to change. He's perfection. He still saves, he still heals, and he still delivers. You may think I'm somewhat antiquated, and didn't we put that stuff aside? And all that we hear of so-called miracle testimonies and healings, that's just the stuff the charlatans do to trick people. Listen, you cannot counterfeit what's not genuine. When it's genuine, it can be counterfeited. But don't think that everything that you might have seen as a counterfeit negates what is genuine, what is authentic. Jesus is alive and well. He's God. He does not change. And what he did in times past, he is all powerful and capable of doing the same today. And so I wanted to share uh, with you something today that I trust would encourage your heart and enrich your faith. I want us to go back in time a little bit, and I want to share with you uh, briefly of the ministry of the late renowned evangelist Maddie B. Poole of the Bethlehem Healing Temple, Chicago, Illinois. I hold in my hand a book that really belongs to my mother, but I borrowed it. Um, I borrowed it and I just haven't given it back to her yet. It's, it's, it's in my possession. And just about a month ago, and mind you, I've been wanting to do this presentation for a while, but about a month ago, uh, I was, uh, I believe, speaking with Pastor Brandon and just kind of giving him um, an idea of what I envisioned doing even a month or so ago um, that we're finally presenting tonight. And I happened to open up uh, the, this, this book, and I saw that the copyright is 1952. So the book I hold in my hand is 70 years of age. This book is 70 years old. And in this book, you will find page after page of living witness testimonies, people who were healed of all kind of uh, sickness and disease, and those also that were delivered from um, addictions and, and were saved um, by faith in Christ Jesus. And you may wonder, well, who is this evangelist Maddie Poole? Some of you may remember her. You may remember her radio broadcast. I just want to share something of her of, uh, of her life uh, briefly, a bio. And I want to thank the International House of Prayer, Kansas City, for providing this. Hear me. Um, there's not a lot, unfortunately, there's not a lot of 
um, historical um, information or data that's available. It took me quite a bit to get what I'm going to share with you. That is some things that are online, um, some clips of radio. I haven't found anything of any of a video uh, clip. It's audio, and they will have uh, various pictures like you saw on the clip we prayed to open up. But let me just share with you who this woman, Maddie B. Poole, was. Maddie Poole was born on June 13th, 1903, to a spiritual family in Memphis, Tennessee, and she grew up in Chicago. When she was 17, she was baptized in water, and at the age of 18, she became active in, in ministry alongside her husband, Charles. Maddie studied at Chicago Music, Musical College and Conservatory, and was a skilled pianist and piano teacher. In addition to work and school commitment, she would spend four hours in prayer each day. In 1932, Maddie's husband, Charles, founded Bethlehem Tabernacle as a mission in Chicago's West Side area. Six years later, Maddie joined him in the ministry as associate pastor. After the church relocated in 1944, remarkable things began to take place within Maddie's ministry. Many people who attended services at Bethlehem Tabernacle were supernaturally healed of chronic conditions, including blindness, deafness, and barrenness. One source even claimed, claims that the dead were raised in Maddie's services. Neck braces, walkers, wheelchairs, and cr crutches adorned the walls of her church as trophies of people who had been healed there. Maddie described her passion for the healing power of the Holy Spirit in this phrase, why should you suffer when others are being healed? Why should you die before your time? Visitors traveled great distances to worship the Lord, experience healing, and hear Maddie's preaching. As the report of healings continued, the church grew, relocated again, and was renamed the Bethlehem Healing Temple. William Ellis, a bishop in the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World, remarked that the services were a powerful ministry on the west side. Sometimes ambulances would bring people to Bethlehem Healing Temple, and Mother Maddie would tell them, you can go ahead and leave. They won't need you once the service is over. Maddie and Charles began broadcasting the services by radio, and their messages focused largely on holiness and healing. At its height, their program reached an international audience. Several audio clips have been preserved and are now available online. By the time Maddie passed away in September of 1968, she had helped plant churches and Bible schools across the U.S. and in Ghana, Liberia, Nigeria, and Jamaica. Bethlehem Healing Temple, the church she and Charles pastored in Chicago, continues to this day. Maddie left a mark on the world as a servant of God who moved in remarkable gifts of healing and deliverance. Wow, that's just a snippet of this woman's life story. Hear me, um, I mentioned Hebrews 13 and 8 being our text. Let me give you the title, and that's simply this, Jesus is the same. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Some may think, well, um, how God moved in previous eras or times uh, is what he did then, but he's not moving like that now. And I beg to differ with you. I don't know who sold you that lie. I don't know where you got your theology from, but that is not accurate. Jesus is still saving, amen? He's still healing, and he's still delivering. And there's ne you, you don't see any passage in Scripture where you see while here on earth uh, in this season, uh, in this era, in this time, where um, there is an, an end or a cessation of his healing, sa saving, healing, and delivering power. Last I looked, there are a lot of people who still need to be saved, still folk need to be healed. Uh, sp still people need to be uh, delivered. Turn on the news and you can tell that all kinds of wickedness and evil going on in our nation. And we need a fresh, uh, fresh fire of, of fresh revival fire. We need a fresh move of God for today. So I wanted us to kind of go back and see somewhat as I present to you this particular personality that God used. And I believe there's something that we can glean from her life. I remember as a child when I first maybe, maybe preteen or about 13, 14, getting a hold of this book. 
And I read these testimonies. I was amazed. See, I grew up in a setting where uh, we were praying for the sick and believing God uh, that people would be healed and seeing people being healed and hearing testimonies often of how God not only saved uh, but healed, and then, yes, even delivered. Delivered them from alcohol, delivered them from drug addictions, delivered them from all kinds of vices. And so for me, you didn't have to convince me of God's saving, healing, and delivering power. Even before I came to know Jesus personally in the pardon of my sins, I was raised in that environment. So my expectation was that what I was being told was, in fact, truth. And then I would see the witnesses. I would hear the witnesses. I know sometimes Sometimes you see some folk who, who may be playing games and they'll make up names and, and they'll make up places and they'll call John Joe of so-and-so place, etc. But I grew up with John and Jane Joe and I saw God's miraculous move in their life. There are people today that I know that are serving God in ministry that were once alcoholics and drug addicts, but God had saved them. There are people that I know that have been healed by the power of God. I've witnessed it myself. I've seen it in my own ministry. And so, uh, listen, it would take you you would just it, it waste your time trying to convince me otherwise. I believe Jesus is alive and well, still saving, healing, and delivering. So I've always been um, very uh, interested in church history, especially Pentecostal charismatic church history from the Azusa Street revivals, even prior to that, when studying church history and seeing the move of the Holy Spirit down throughout the ages. Some People feel like, well, the Holy Spirit just began falling at Azusa Street. Oh, no, 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 no. That was the Azusa Street revival. He had not stopped falling and, and filling people. Um, when we get to a place, however, as the church where we pull away from uh, and veer off course, pull away from um, the foundational doctrines of Jesus Christ, then there's no faith to believe. If you're not preaching salvation, folk won't have safe, uh, faith to believe for salvation. So thank God for people like Billy Graham who got up preaching the gospel and bringing uh, people to the, to the cross of Jesus Christ or what accomplished, he accomplished there which looked like a defeat, but was in fact our victory. And so he preached the gospel uh, uh, all around the world and people were saved. And thank God for others who not only preached the gospel message to get people saved, but also told them that you can be filled with the Holy Spirit, that you can be healed, that you can operate in spiritual gifts, being baptized with the Holy Ghost, and that you can experience deliverance and bring deliverance to others. And so needless to say, when I, I, I heard about this woman, I hadn't heard of her name before. My first First introduction to her was with the book that I presented to you a few minutes ago. And so when YouTube uh, began to, when people began to upload her videos on, on YouTube, it just blessed me because now I could put a name with a face and I could hear this woman's ministry. And I encourage you to go to YouTube and just put Maddie B. Poole. Now it's going to be old school. It's going to be 1950s, 1960s. It's going to take you back. You're going to love it. You're going to hear songs, perhaps some of you who grew up in the church that you haven't heard since you were a child. You're going to hear the storm is passing over. You're going to hear um, uh, uh, sweeping through the city. In fact, that was one of Maddie um, Poole's favorite songs, sweeping through the city. So I thought about her. I listened to some people who uh, were interviewed about her life, and I pulled some things that certainly ministered to me that I want to share with you. I believe if we would embrace these practices, it would be that it would be our perspective and our practice that we will see ministry, mighty, powerful ministry like Maddie Poole had that we can have it now. She fell asleep serving her generation. The baton has now been handed to you and I. Stir up the gift of God in you. First thing I want to say to you, about Maddie Poole is when you study her life, you will see that clearly she was a woman of God and a woman of faith, a woman of God and faith. She was not pretentious. She was not a hypocrite. She was not someone who pretended to be a woman of God. No, she was a woman of God and a woman of God who had great faith. It's already been stated one of Two of her uh, famous sayings, renowned even to this day, people recall it. I mentioned uh, uh, her name to Dr. Odessa, and she immediately began to say what Maddie was known to say. Why should you suffer when others are being healed 
And why should you die before your time? I want to say the same to encourage you today. Why should you suffer when others are being healed? I'm, healing a pe I'm hearing of people being healed all over the world. Do you think for a moment that God's a respecter of persons? Absolutely not. If you can have faith and believe in him, you too can experience a breakthrough you can be healed and don't let the devil make you think for a moment that you're not going to make it you're going to not when God wants you to live you've got to pull out the word and declare I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord that's for somebody right now you can't even wait till the end of this session you need to make that declaration I shall not die but live come on put in the comment every one of you put it in there I will live I will live I will live yeah you will live and you will declare the wonderful works of the Lord. Furthermore, as a woman of God in faith, what we see of her seemed like I shouldn't have to share this point, but I must in today's contemporary times. She was a, a woman who practiced a holy lifestyle. Holiness, holiness. I know some folk have uh, kind of gotten to some extremes with the message of holiness, and they made us think it was more so in dress and uh, whether you wore makeup or not. And, and we, we understand, I think, better that it is a matter of the heart, but don't fool yourself. Some of what we're, uh, we're presenting as holiness today is it, it, it's a stench in the nostrils of God. I know I knew I wouldn't, I, I thought I'd have an amen in here, but I, I knew it would be quiet out there. Listen, I'm not coming to you with a bunch of rules and regulations, but I think every one of us needs to check ourselves by the word of God and the Holy Spirit. If your conversation, your communication, your conversation, your conduct does not glorify God, then you need to cease from it. Because if you're not walking in true holiness, then you're not really going to be able to move like God wants you in the flow of his spirit, his holy spirit. So she was a woman that preached holiness. There's one of the, one of the um, clips you might find, it's going to rain, and she's singing that old song, it's going to rain, it's going to rain, better get ready and bear this in mind. God told Noah, uh, showed, showed Noah the rainbow sign, won't be water but fire next time. Man, that's the song I used to hear folks sing as I was a child, but you don't really hear that song anymore. In fact, you don't even hear hellfire and brimstone. I'm not saying we should come at people with that. I mean, thank God for grace. But let's remind people, not only is there a heaven, there is a hell. And I know it's an unpopular message, but we got to present the gospel for what it is. And it's good news. You don't have to go to hell. You can be saved. But she lived a consecrated life, a sanctified life. She lived a life that was set apart to God and set apart from sin. So I encourage every one of us, let's get into that place as he has made us holy. Let's walk in the holiness uh, of God. Let's make certain that what we do brings him glory. Let's make certain that the words we speak magnify the name of the Lord. Let's not be given to that which would grieve the Holy Spirit. Let's not be those who might dress uh, you know, as, as, as women, you might have a, a, a dress line that's down to your ankles. That doesn't make you holy because you can be as wretched in your heart, as evil as a junkyard dog. So just because you look holy don't make you holy. So let's make certain that we deal with the matter of the heart and let's live unto God as consecrated vessels. Our lives belong to God. Your spirit, your soul, your body belongs to God. And she exhibited that. She was an evangelist to the core. I want to encourage you with the word of the Lord that Paul gave to Timothy, do the work of, the, of an evangelist. Every one of you in this room, those of you who are joining me online, do the work of an evangelist. You may not be licensed or ordained as an evangelist, but do the work of an evangelist. What does an evangelist do? Uh, a, 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 an evangelist spreads the good news, the gospel. That's what the gospel means, good news. And so the evangelist, a real evangelist, is not looking for the next church meeting. I'm not saying that the evangelist can't run revivals at the church, but there are too many folk trying to get a church meeting, a conference, a workshop, a seminar, when you need to get out there in the hedges and the highways where the people who need to receive the good news can hear you. Go where people need the message of the gospel. You don't need to be licensed to get out on the street corner and preach Christ. Uh, you can go during visiting hours and, 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 and ask who hasn't received a visitor and go in there and minister to people the gospel. Sometimes it, 
you can do that. They can't even respond. They can't even tell you to get out because they're hooked up to, to tubes, can't even open up their mouth. You just go in there in Jesus' name and preach the gospel and, and believe that God will cause them to believe for salvation so that your sowing seed or watering seed that's been sown, trusting that the Lord of the harvest will cause there to be a harvest, that the word that you speak will be fruitful. So she was an evangelist to the core. Furthermore, I like to say it this way, she was a servant leader with her husband. Uh, I, I hear great things about her and her husband as being meek people, being strong people, being great leaders, but they understood their role as serving God and then serving people. And so I encourage you, uh, make certain that you're serving. You want God to use you, but only so that you can be seen on platforms. No, find yourself serving even behind the scenes. Before ever I got a mic in the hand, I learned ministry uh, serving with my mom who did not ask my sister and I, would you like to go to the church and help clean up? No, get in the car. And so we had to clean our house. We had to clean the house of God, but I never complained. In fact, I always found it a joy. I found it a pleasure before even I came to grips with being um, uh, recognizing my call to ministry, I remember, um, I remember trying to help build the church I was raised in as if I was a pastor or elder. I would go, and I'm an introvert, so I know this is God. I remember one lady specifically, Sister, uh, Sister, Wal uh, Sister Johnson, I believe was her name, and uh, I remember she was a visitor, and she came with her son. He looked to be about my age, and I, I made certain as I saw them leaving, it was their first time. We didn't have a huge church, so I, you recognize people there for the first time. And I went to her, and I just I spoke to her and her son and, and trusted they, they enjoyed the service and invited them to come back again. And they did, and then became members of the church until they relocated. And so what you can do, just being nice to people can make a difference. Be an evangelist to, to the core and be a servant leader. Furthermore, I heard this about her, that she was a businesswoman. Yeah, she was a businesswoman. She handled her business with integrity. I thought that was a great thing to say because there's a lot of folk that are in business and terribly or tragically, they say they're in, uh, they're in the kingdom business, but they're not men and women of integrity. Let's be men and women of integrity and let's honor the Lord at all times, being true to our word. Uh, when we say we're going to do something, let's make certain we do it. Amen. Those of you who've been called to ministry and you get invitations to go and minister at conferences or church revivals, crusades, be men and women of integrity. God has graced you with something that you did not have without him. And so don't get the big head. Be a steward of the mysteries of God and glorify God. This ain't about you. This ain't about you securing the next meeting. This not about everybody serving you. You got to be like Jesus and get a basin of water and wash the feet of people. Amen. Furthermore, as it has been said in her bio, she was a woman of prayer, often spending hours in prayer. We want to be used of God, but we don't want to pray. We don't want to spend the time in prayer. People don't mind spending time before others in preaching or in presenting or in singing or in teaching, but they don't want to prepare themselves prayerfully. Hear me, preachers. Hear me, teachers. Hear me, worship leaders, uh, uh, worship team members, uh, band members, ushers, greeters, children, wherever you serve, prepare yourself prayerfully for ministry. Furthermore, she was a diligent worker. She was loyal. She was faithful. She was reported to minister. I thought this was interesting, and I only found um, this out recently with some of the interviews. Hear me. She, uh, she was a woman of remarkable strength and power but often ministered in great weakness. Here the healer was often the subject of weakness physically. Hmm. Amazing that God can use you. God can use you to pray for folk to be healed and you're going through yourself. God can use you to pray for somebody else's marriage. Yours is on the rocks and theirs is being saved. God can use you to encourage somebody and you're battling discouragement. So don't wait till for a perfect scenario for you to stretch forth your hand to heal and to share, to do as we said Sunday. You've been hurt. Yes, we understand it, but you were hurt to hurt. You were hurt to heal, comforted to comfort. So go ahead and do that in Jesus' name. And so 
I found out that um, she, she was encouraged many times to slow down, to take some rest. And she would say, you're right, but she wouldn't really do it. There were times that she wasn't eating. She felt like it was her call. In order to fulfill her call, she had to go wherever uh, she was summoned, wherever they were calling for her to come, she would, she would go. And so she was traveling, and in the 40s and 50s and 60s, travel wasn't, it's a challenge today. Um, but it was more challenging then, and she was constantly out. Her radio broadcasts, her, 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 her fame, and people who needed healing and deliverance were asking her to come. And so um, she would go, and I remember one of the persons, he's an elderly man now, and a bishop in their organization shared when he was a young man, he said to her, because she was like his mom, like, you just need to slow down. You need to stop, stop going so much. And she said, can I go just this one more time? And he says, okay, but people would tell her, and I'm going somewhere with all of this. So she, she, she didn't do what she should have done, and her body started breaking down. Her body started breaking down. They say she didn't sleep much, not because she had insomnia, but because the telephone was always ringing at all hours of the day and night. And she felt like she had to pick up the phone and answer it and take time to share with those, to pray with those, to minister to those. Listen, you and I have a treasure, but it's in an earthen vessel. Even Jesus stole away to sleep. We got to make certain that we're taking care of ourselves. ourselves. And so, sadly, um, as her story goes, she came to the place of the end of her life where she transitioned from planet Earth to glory on September 13th, 1968, having lived just 65 years. And here now, that was 54 years ago, but her legacy continues. Wow. I wish I could say more. My time really has ended. I encourage you to be a student of history and let her remarkable ministry help you out. Like I said, when you tune in, you're going to hear the songs of a live service going on in radio broadcast, and you're going to hear her singing and, and testimonies and, and preaching, telling people about Jesus and encouraging them uh, to turn to the Lord. And you're going to hear things that will lift your spirit. There are others that you can glean from. And so far this year, I've shared the late Apostle Toro Skinner. Couldn't wait to get to this. Now, I feel the anointing of God even right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I, I need to stop right here because here's what we're going to do. Don't you go anywhere. Uh, just It's about a two-minute clip, a two-minute prayer of Maddie Poole. You know, the anointing doesn't die. It lingers. In fact, the anointing of God upon her ministry and voice captured on a video recording is much like prayer cloths. She was known for sending out prayer cloths as the example we see in Scripture when pieces of uh, Paul's apron were sent out and people uh, who received those things, they were healed and demons were driven out. And I just believe for those who may be sick and diseased even tonight that as this prayer has gone on, and I believe it's like from 1950, 1958, some, somewhere there along uh, that time, that as she prays, I want you to have faith in God and receive your healing right where you are. As we pray for you, place your hand on or as near the place you're suffering as possible. And if you would believe that Jesus is there, he's going to place his hand on your body too. And believe it, Jesus Christ is going to heal you. Shall we pray? In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father, for the power that's in your great name to heal and cast out devils. We thank you right now for the faith and be the laying the hand on that body as this record is placed. Oh God, we thank you for this great gift that thou hast given unto thy unworthy, unprofitable servant. And now, Lord, in Jesus' lovely name, I take full dominion and power over every disease and affliction of the bodies of these that have their hand on their body. In Jesus' name, Satan. I command you by the power of the living God, take your hands off of these bodies. God Almighty, work mighty miracles. Let healing be done everywhere that this record is pleased. In thy holy name, dear Jesus, heal their bodies. 
make the neighborhood whole. And I thank you, Lord Jesus. And I thank you, Jesus. And I thank you for healing right now, Lord, to the gift that thou hast given unto us. Jesus Christ healed your body. My dear friend, you may not feel anything. You may not have felt a thing while we pray. But I want you to know that Jesus Christ ordered us to make this record. I send it to you that you might hear my voice praying. And if you will believe, your job now is to thank the Lord for your healing. Just thank him every day and believe that you are healed. And if you will do that without doubting, you'll be able to write to the pool letter and say to the pool. Jesus Christ has healed my body. God bless you. Only believe. Only believe. All things are possible if you only believe. Only believe You, you, you there Only believe All things are possible If you only believe And I agree and align myself with that prayer that was prayed decades ago That the life of that prayer the spirit of that prayer, the anointing upon that prayer is yet powerful today to cause conditions in your spirit and body to change. Be healed, be delivered, be set free. You who need Christ, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Call upon him now. He'll answer you and save you right where you are. Just where you are, believe on him and say, save me, Jesus. Save me, Jesus. Quicker than I can snap my finger, salvation comes to you and brings transformation into your life. Deliverance even now from addictions, we proclaim it's yours right now. We pray the desire for the drug, the desire for cigarettes, the desire for the alcohol that's had you in bondage, an addict to alcohol, an alcoholic that God sets you free completely in the name of Jesus. Blind eyes be open. We speak to eyes even right now. Lay your hands on your eyes right now. Blurriness of vision, glaucoma, go. I thank you, Father, for your healing power that you give sight to the blind. And I thank you today, Father, for the testimonies that we will hear of your saving, healing, and delivering grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If God has done something good for you tonight, come on, send us a note about it. Put it in the comment section. If you prayed to receive Christ, I want you to simply get your mobile device and text Agape to 797979. Let us know that you received Christ or perhaps you rededicated your life tonight. Please let us know because we want to pray with you and be here for you that you may grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Furthermore, if you need a church home, Agape is a great place. And listen, I just believe, God, that as a church, we are still scratching the surface that there's more in store for us. I have been praying. We have been praying over a year now, praying revival fire. And I believe God has, has us here for purpose on purpose he's preparing us for a move of God that we've not seen in our generation and so I thank you for being with us I thank you for listening I trust that you are encouraged I trust that your faith is ignited that your faith is enriched what I need is people like you who will believe God with me as I said on Sunday if you come with expectancy if you get online with expectancy God will show up and then God will show out I believe God join me on the prayer call in the morning Morning, Thursday and Friday and Sunday. Can't wait to hear my brother, our brother, Dr. Alex Ellis. You're going to be blessed. Shalom, my brothers and sisters. Shalom. Oh, don't you worry.
Shit.